Hello, I'm Megan Jordan, the curatorial assistant in the Department of Photography at the George Eastman Museum. I'm joining you today from George Eastman's library in Rochester, New York. It's beginning to feel like winter here, so today we are going to talk about how to photograph snowflakes. The first person to successfully photograph a snowflake was Wilson Bentley, who was born in 1865 in snowy Vermont. From the age of 15 until his death at 66, he studied the beautiful natural creations. First, he attempted to collect snowflakes and draw them from under a microscope, but they would melt too quickly for him to finish his illustrations. When he was 16, his parents, his parents spent their life savings on a camera that he could attach his microscope to, as seen in this image. He would work through every snowstorm, collecting snowflakes on black fabric and transferring them to his microscope to be photographed with his camera. It took Bentley two whole winters to successfully photograph a snowflake, but he finally did it. His goal to share the beauty of snowflakes with his family and friends was achieved. He would give away his photographs or sell them for a few cents and even invite people over to project his images onto a sheet in his backyard, like a little theater. He quickly gained the nickname Snowflake Bentley. One of the amazing things that Bentley discovered was that no two snowflakes are the same. Here at the George Eastman Museum, we have five snowflake photographs by Snowflake Bentley in the collection. As you can see here, all of them are different. Some of them are pointy or have broad branches and others have long tree-like ends called dendrites. If you want to learn more about Wilson Bentley, I recommend the book Snowflake Bentley by Jacqueline Briggs Martin with illustrations by Mary Azarian. I like this book because it tells about Bentley's life through both a wonderful story and beautiful woodcut prints. But also, it has facts about his life on the sides, like on this page, which details his birth date and location on the left. More than 100 years after Snowflake Bentley started photographing snowflakes, a local Rochester photographer and professor began photographing them as well. Michael Press first photographed snowflakes in 2002 and has continued to do so every winter since. He published a book, Michael Photographs a Snowflake, that takes the reader through his process, which is rather similar to Snowflake Bentley's, but with much updated technology. Like Bentley, Perez catches snowflakes on a sheet of black velvet. Then he uses a tiny needle to carefully move a snowflake to a slide under a microscope. He then photographs the snowflake before it melts using a digital camera. As you can see here in a picture from the book, Perez's setup is rather different than Bentley's. For instance, his camera is much smaller. That's because cameras have changed drastically in the last century. I like the book Michael Photographs a Snowflake because it includes examples of his photographs as seen here. It also gives fun snowflake facts, like did you know that the design of a snowflake is affected by how far up in the sky it forms, the temperature, humidity, and any static electricity in the atmosphere? I certainly did it until I read this book. And now I'll turn this over to the Rochester Museum and Science Center where you'll learn a fun snowflake activity. Hi, I'm Kevin with the Rochester Museum and Science Center. And when our friends at the George Eastman Museum told us about today's story, Snowflake Bentley, we were very inspired by Wilson's determination to capture the first photograph. So today, we're going to share with you a little experiment on the science of crystals. It's a super fun kitchen experiment that with a little patience and a little bit of time and effort, you can get some cool looking salt crystal snowflakes. With that, you're gonna need some supplies and materials. What you will need for this experiment is one adult, or somebody who's okay managing hot water, um, some iodized salt, paper towels because you are dealing with water and you may very well make a mess. We don't want that. Uh, some hot water and a measuring cup. This was already heated, of course a tablespoon, some paper, some scissors, and of course you're also going to want a shallow dish or a plate to pour the liquid into. The next step is going to be creating a snowflake. You 
You can put that aside for a moment, and the next step will involve creating a saturated solution. Now, that's a fancy, fancy term. So what we're going to be doing is you'll take your water that should be heated. This is, um, you don't really need too much, just enough. And with that, you will begin to put tablespoon by tablespoon of salt into the, right into the water. This is a bit of chemistry, right? Because we're mixing up two different solutions. We have our water, H2O, and our salt, NaCl. And the next step is you will take a shallow dish or plate or serving tray, and you can lay out your snowflake. And what you're going to want to do is just pour the water gently over the plate or the dish and onto the snowflake. It should cover the entire snowflake that you have created. Um, so you're gonna wanna set this aside for a couple of days. Maybe go outside, play, build an igloo. Um, come back inside, have some cocoa. Look at your observations, record a log, and then we will wait and see what happens. All right, so a couple of days have passed, and let's check out our results here. As you can see, we do have some crystals that have formed. Thanks for joining us for a look at photographing and creating your own snowflakes. For more activities and videos from the museum, visit eastman.org kids.